Well, all around Northeast Kansas, there are hidden gems, places you didn't know you wanted to go. Tonight, we take a closer look at a growing antique scene, a veritable picker's paradise, and the bustling metropolis of Paxico. Well, this week we're in Paxico, home of an up and coming antique district, as well as some other shops, museums, art studios, things like that. But with the holiday shopping season almost here, you may be wondering what to get for that special someone who has everything and you never know what to find. Maybe what you need to find is a different place to shop. That's why we've come here to Paxico to take a look around the antique district. We'll start out with Main Street Antiques. Walking through the antique shops in Paxico, you get a distinct flavor and feel for what each store brings to the table. There's so much to see and to find within this small town. I talked to Larry Winkler of Main Street Antiques about what has made Paxico really stand out in the antiquing world. Well, I think a lot of it is because it's a small town and a lot of people, we get a lot of people here from uh, larger cities like Kansas City or, you know, every place all over the country. And it's just a small town atmosphere. I mean, really small town. That's what we are, uh, that uh, people really enjoy. And just, just to see the old buildings uh, kind of preserved the way they were back in those days. And, uh, and then the other thing is just the, the uh, number of antique shops in, in, a, in a small area so that people can wander from store to store uh, easily within walking distance. Well, I made my way around the block and down the street to meet with Steve Hund, the owner of Mill Creek Antiques, to find out how this longtime Paxico resident looks at how a decaying period of time for the town actually set it up for some future growth. It provided an opportunity for a, a lot of buildings that were available and it pretty much retained its original characteristic which was kind of an old west town setting with the uh, uh, building fronts with the false fronts and the tin, uh, ornamental tin fronts on, the, on, on most of them and, uh, and this general store which had been here since 1886. And there's more than just antiques in Paxico. More recently art studios have been opening up and even a toy museum with some military artifacts as well housed in a new museum uh, right there in the historic district of Paxico. A nice find in small town Wabunsee County. You know, with Christmas coming up, it might be the perfect place for a few gifts. They said they're anticipating at least some point, they don't have the date picked yet, yeah. but in early December, there will be some kind of Christmas shopping and nice. things that the community comes together. It's a great community feel there, too. You can really tell all the antique stores, uh, while computer, uh, competing against each other, yeah. are also very working together, very cooperative. It's a like, lot of pride in that community. Absolutely. I think it's important to... Uh, teach your kids nowadays how things were back when, before they were around, how their grandparents and great-grandparents had to do it. I find it's all too easy today with the smartphones and computers to forget what we had to do. Imagine you take a kid out of the city right now, he'd be lost. He couldn't survive. Uh, this is something that was everyday necessity. That's how your house got built. That's how your barn got built. You took care of your animals. We had a young man here today that uh, brought a piece that he'd made in 4-H, and we had him work at the forge. I wish you'd have been here to see him work. It was very, very fun. It's an important, interesting part of America. It's kind of the beginning of all tool making, and it's the basis of lots and lots of trades. Almost everybody had to come to the blacksmith. Partners had their hammers made by blacksmiths, the masons had their trowels made by blacksmiths, so it's an elemental craft. If we didn't preserve, if we, if we didn't care to share, uh, they, they might never see it except maybe an aesthetic display at a museum somewhere. The World War II veteran had his final wish granted. 93-year-old Clifford Everett was a captain in the U.S. Army Air Corps and was a pilot in World War II. His final request now? To get back behind the controls. Our Kansas First News cameras have the exclusive video as we were the only ones in the cockpit for this flight of a lifetime. It's a dream Clifford Everett has waited years to make a reality. Cliff, do you miss being up in the sky? Oh yeah. The 93-year-old World War II veteran asking for one final request, to be a pilot just one more time. In a four-seater Cessna 182, Clifford, along with a flight instructor, a nurse's aide, and our cameras, took over the controls for 30 minutes over downtown Topeka, Lake Perry, and Lawrence. He did really good. 
it felt like the pilot was doing it, you know, it wasn't too jerky or he turned great. It was pretty good. It all came true through a wish he made through the Topeka Presbyterian Manor's dream team. It connects to make sure all residents in long term care can end their life with no regrets. Just before he got on the plane, he found out he was going to be on it and get to go up. What was his reaction? Surprise. He, was happy. he said it would be too much work. We said, no, we'll make it happen. Clifford didn't say much, but did add the instruments in this plane were different than back in World War II, but says he doesn't forget the feeling of being airborne. Proud to be a vet. Where's his hat? And Every day. Most proud. Yes. He has a picture of his uh, plane that he liked to fly in his room. A final dream come true for a hero who gave this country so much. The dream team says it took a month to make Clifford's wish a reality. Once he made the request, they found a local pilot who said he could take Clifford up in the skies. The dream team started about two months ago and says it's granted wishes ranging from today's flight to a shopping trip to even someone who simply just wanted macaroni and cheese. An inspirational story from an inspirational man. He enjoyed it.